Okay. Yeah, thank you for the uh, introduction. My name is Jukas Werker and I will tell you a bit about execution environment best practices, automation, why you should automate execution environments in the first place. Um, and we'll get started with the agenda. Um, yeah. Also, first of all, it's just a bit about basics so that everybody knows what execution environments are. I will keep this brief. Um, then about uh, the tool belt, um, some best practices, automation, and afterwards we still have some time for Q&A, hopefully. So, introduction. Who am I? Um, my name is Lukas Werker. Uh, I work for Systemvertrieb Alexander GmbH. <laughs> so, if you're not from Germany, you probably don't know us. Uh, I'm personally from Cologne, Germany, and I do mainly DevOps stuff, uh, infrastructure automation, hybrid clouds, everything that's fun, basically. May you use microphone, please? Pardon? Uh, the microphone is just for the recording, we but I can. One, but then you have to have to <laughs> it can also try to speak louder. I can't do anything about my German accent, unfortunately. <laughs> so, is this better? Do you hear me now? Yes? Also in the last row? Perfect. I feel like a cyborg. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. Um, yeah, I um, started my career in uh, very German in the automotive, uh, with automotive engineering background. Uh, just a bit of uh, three years in embedded systems, uh, doing um, yeah, IT for six years now. And uh, you can find me at nwerker at uh, github.com, gitlab.com, and of course the Ansible Community Forum. If you're not in the Ansible Community Forum, get on the Ansible Community Forum. <laughs> Uh, about this talk, um, best practices, the world is not black and white. Um, I understand this, so what is the best practice for me? Maybe not the best practice for you. So we'll talk a bit about best practices, good practices, experience from projects uh, that I've worked on, a bit of scoping, and uh, just in general a bit of food for thought uh, that you can take home, hopefully. Um, and I will start talk with a call for action. Uh, when I started to uh, look at execution environments, there were no best practices. And last time I checked, yesterday, there are still no best practices around. So I will publish this in the GitHub repository. Please contribute, please fork, please PR, please uh, discuss with me, especially if you are, uh, have other meanings. <laughs> uh, and yeah, let's get uh, the discussion started. Uh, about the motivation, um, yeah, we will talk about why would you might want to use Ansible execution environments in the first place. Uh, are there any pitfalls in maintaining execution environments? Um, why should we automate execution environment builds and how? Um, and what I already mentioned, the lack of public community maintained best practices. So I want to hear from you first. Who is using AWX and or Ansible automation platform? That's a lot of people. Who are, of you are maintaining execution environments in your organization? Yeah, let's see. Maybe you go home and have less work after this or more work. <laughs> so the basics, what are execution environments? The big picture is um, basically that you have uh, like an Ansible runtime with all your needed dependencies and collections um, independent of the environment so you can take an OCI compliant container and um, image and just run it on your AWX, on your Ansible automation platform. But you can also use this um, yeah, on your notebook, for instance, or um, especially like in the future uh, edge, where the more com um, way more important edge automation and or cloud um, Kubernetes. Um, yeah, so that's the broad idea, but there's more to it. So, um, Dependent, uh, dependency management, um, execution environments are a great tool for dependency management. And I think when they were initially announced, um, there was a big misunderstanding. People and uh, the community looked at them like, oh, yet another piece of software we have to maintain. Nice. But for me and for my workflows and the products I work on, it was a huge help with collection level metadata that you don't have to uh, maintain and manage all those dependencies and uh, Execution environments on Ansible Builder does that for you now. So there are a number of tools to build, handle, or run execution environments. And I will talk about uh, Ansible Builder, Ansible Navigator, Ansible Runner, um, and a bit about the OCI uh, part of things. Um, 
yeah, I will not talk about Receptor because Receptor just uses uh, Ansible Runner and the remote execution capability of Ansible Runner, so it's not really worth mentioning in this context. Execution environments, there's a Red Hat marketing slide I ripped off and changed a little bit. So <laughs> there's uh, this basic say, what, is, what are execution environments? Execution environments are collections, libraries, uh, and Ansible core. And this is all packaged on top of a universal base image or some kind of base images. And some parts are missing. Those missing parts is Ansible Runner, which is a very important um, piece of software to do this remote execution and talk back to um, like the control node. Um, and there's also like OS uh, system dependencies. Um, so before we had execution environments in AWX, um, oh yeah. Let me stop there. Um, this would be, for instance, OpenShift clients. So if you install kubernetes.core because you want to uh, automate against uh, Kubernetes, um, the, it would, the collection would basically expect you to have OpenShift clients installed if you're on a Red Hat system. So um, Ansible Runner and those dependencies um, were on uh, like Ansible Tower isol isolated node before, and um, the Ansible Core and a library part of things, so Python libraries in this case, uh, were in Python virtual environments before. So let's talk a bit about the tools you can use and which you should maybe lose for uh, some use cases. Um, I already mentioned the tools, so the main tools here are Ansible Builder, Ansible Navigator, and uh, Ansible Runner. Um, but there are also some uh, constraints. Um, we have some dependencies, mainly being we need a container engine. Um, in this case, Portman and Docker are supported. And um, f to run the tools, especially Ansible Builder and Ansible Navigator, we need a Python installation greater than 3.8. So I had this uh, with colleagues coming at me like, hey, I want to use it, but I can't. Oh, which system are you on? Yeah, Red Hat 7. <laughs> OK, there's the problem. Um, for the people who never seen this, uh, this is an execution environment definition, um, and it basically, um, I will get a bit more mobile, so basically um, it looks a bit familiar for those guys who've maybe seen Docker Compose. Uh, you have a version, and then you can uh, just describe your dependencies, which Ansible Core version do you want to have in the image, which Ansible Runner do you want to have in the image, and then you can uh, give it the other dependence we've looked at. So um, Galaxy, uh, Ansible Galaxy, requirements.yaml, some Python libraries you expect, and some system libraries. Um, you have a base image which you build upon, and um, if this is not enough, you have some additional build steps, um, which we will talk about later on as well. For those who haven't seen the other parts, like requirements YAML or bindup.txt, so requirements YAML, you notice um, from Ansible Galaxy when you install um, things in your projects, um, and a bindup.txt, bindup is actually a Python tool as well, um, which stands for um, binary dependency management, something. And uh, you can basically also install um, binary dependencies uh, with a little a bit of logic attached to it on, uh, depending on which system you are on. So, that are my thoughts on this tool chain. <laughs> uh, I propose and I prefer that you use Ansible Builder as the preferred tool for um, building execution environments because it's also the project, also the tool, which is home of the execution environment definition. Um, you can use Ansible Navigator for this, but it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife, which does everything, and it does everything okay. Um, and it's definitely the preferred tool uh, for running automation and inspecting images. So if you want to uh, use this uh, execution environment that you may be using in your AWX and you want to inspect it or you want to uh, run automation on your local machine. Uh, Ansible Runner, I tried to run uh, things in execution <laughs> in the execution environment once and it was hard, let's say it like this. It took a while to get um, started so, and it's really not intended to do this. It's intended purpose is uh, machine to machine communication and it has CLI capabilities but only that it has it, you, yeah, you should necessarily be, uh, should be used. And on the OCI part, um, yeah, you have Podman and Docker, um, but um, I would definitely pre uh, prefer Podman and Builder because uh, since version 
1.2 of Ansible Builder, is, there's not really a uh, feature parity anymore. If you um, want to use Docker, uh, you can. Uh, you can build your images with BuildX. Uh, so I will dive into that a little bit later. Um, yeah, this is uh, the community logos I just shout out because they're cute. Um, and when I think about Ansible Navigator, I don't think just about any Swiss Army knife but this one. <laughs> So let's come to best practices. Um, so yeah, I thought a lot about best practices and uh, when I accumulated a lot of best practices, um, I thought, yeah, maybe we need to categorize them. So uh, the main categor uh, categories are execution environment best practice, Ansible best practices, container best practices, and security best practices. And uh, like container security best practices are very closely tied together. So um, yeah, you will see. Who knows about collection level metadata? Some people are not sure, <laughs> okay. So this is basically the killer feature, at least for me. Um, and if you take anything with, uh, w um, away from this talk, it's that please uh, use collection level metadata. That's like basically 90% of the best practices. Um, so what does it do? Um, you basically maintain your um, collection um, and all the dependencies within the collection and then Ansible Builder when you build a collection or um, the container file uh, will look at the collections and everything happens automatically. You don't have to, um, like back in the days when you had to look at the readme of some uh, collection and uh, figure out which um, Python libraries you have to install. This is not the case anymore. Um, yeah. Um, you just have to list the collections, even the requirements YAML, or with uh, Ansible um, yeah, execution environment definition version three, you can also just define it in the file directly. Um, and on collection level, if you maintain collections, please implement collection level metadata if you haven't yet. Um, if you follow the naming best practices, as in requirements txt or bind up txt on the root level of your repository, everything will be happen automatically. If you don't, um, you have to declare an execution environment definition within your repository under uh, meta execution environment at YAML. Um, even some big um, collections do this, for instance, um, Azure, I think. Community participation. I opened heaps of GitHub um, issues <laughs> because a lot of people actually weren't aware about this and also you have to think if you um, think about um, when using collections, maybe that's not really the use case uh, from the maintainer side of things. Maybe they don't use AWX um, and therefore don't care about this. Base images. Um, there happened a lot uh, recently. So uh, when um, execution environments were introduced, Ansible Runner was the default base image. Ansible Runner is still the default base image. So if you don't declare any base image, it will use this base image. Don't do this. Um, because it's deprecated, it's um, running on CentOS 8 Stream. I think CentOS 8 Stream is going to be end of life this May. Um, so yeah, don't use this. There's uh, AWX EE which is the default base image of AWX, which is also including like the most common collections used from the AWX community. Um, and then the three following um, collections are kind of the um, yeah, enterprise um, base images you get when you have an AAP subscription. So we have EE29, uh, which is basically uh, the legacy collection uh, for migration purposes. And then you have EE Minimal, which is, gives, gives you just the base image with an, a certain Ansible Core version and a certain Ansible Runner version, which is um, supported by Red Hat in um, the version of AAP you are using. There's also a EE supported, which is basically the base image um, EE minimal with some, uh, yeah, with all the Red Hat supported collections and dependencies that you would usually uh, get in the um, automation hub. And I think since September last year, um, there's also the uh, Greg Sutcliffe talked about this this morning. There's also like the, um, the upstream part of those uh, enterprise things, which is community EE minimal. Um, you can find this on GitHub registry, which is basically, um, yeah, 
just containing Ansible Core and Ansible um, Runner, and uh, which can be used uh, in latest greatest, or you can also uh, via tagging uh, use a specific uh, Ansible version. Um, there's also Community EE Base, which uh, ex is basically EE minimal with Ansible.POSIX, Ansible Utils, and Ansible Windows. So that's just the base images. Let's come to the best practices. Uh, one thing I already um, to uh, told you is that uh, you shouldn't be using uh, Ansible Runner image, in my um, humble opinion. And um, for the other part, use images according to your needs. So um, there's AWX EE. You can use this as a base image. Doesn't mean you should, um, because there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, and I've seen a lot of people who are like, oh yeah, I'm using AWX, so I need to use this as a base image. That's not the case. Um, use something like Fedora, uh, use something like the community base images, um, build your own to your needs. Um, for comparison, AWX EE, last time I checked, was uh, roughly 1.8 gigabytes uh, large, and for example, Fedora is about 264 megabytes. Who wants to know what's in there? Um, I'll show the, uh, share the GitHub repository, and you can just look in the execution environment YAML in this repository, and um, there's all the stuff in AWX EE listed. You probably don't need much of that if you're building custom execution environments. Um, some other things um, that people stumble about, um, if you are enterprise customer and uh, use what you pay for. So uh, EE minimal is not, uh, equals not EE minimal. Uh, you really have to use the um, images supplied to you for the specific AAP version that you use. So if you update your AAP for an AAP 2.3.2.2.4 and you don't update the base image, you run some outdated Ansible core version which is not supported in this AAP. So probably if you raise a ticket because something breaks, um, there's probably no support for it. <coughs> Let's come to the execution environment definition. So um, I've shown you the definition, I've shown you the files, and um, first and foremost, just use the default naming meaning execution environment.yaml requirements.txt or .yaml ansible cfg binary.txt. Um, there's no reason not to use those. And um, try to keep on track. There's like three versions of um, execution environment definition um, until today. It's uh, version one, um, most people will notice. Uh, version 2, uh, which brought uh, Podman container image signing, and uh, version 3 brought a lot of new features, actually, uh, actually so, that allows uh, for a very granular choice of um, yeah, choosing Ansible Core or Ansible Runner versions you have, and also the Python version correlated to this. Um, it deprecates the Ansible Runner base image, yet to the base <laughs> Ansible Runner base image is still the default image, so uh, look out if you um, use this. Uh, and it also adds some build options. Um, there are a lot of, you have to look them up, and uh, fine-grained additional build steps. So before we had like two build steps, um, append base, prepend base, and now you have uh, eight steps where you can very fine granular um, tell the builder when to include or run some container file um, things. So, uh, about scoping, um, yeah, if you don't have to maintain execution environments, uh, you don't have to ex maintain execution environments if you don't build them in the first place. It sounds silly, but um, think about execution environments like a tool for you that shouldn't like um, break your process or anything, shouldn't slow you down. So um, just uh, maintain as little as possible, but as much as necessary. That's like the way that I do it, and it's um, actually um, pretty good. Then um, align the release management and testing with your Ansible workflow. Uh, I see this, that um, in a lot of projects that people have thought about this and implemented like a testing, staging, production environment, and then they build execution environment and push to every stage at the same time. That shouldn't be the case. Think about uh, building it in dev, testing it in dev, and then 
um, it should follow the rest of the release management you've implemented. Um, use collection overloading with care. Maybe dependencies will break. So what are is collections overloading? I came up with this time, so I have to explain it. Um, so basically what you can do is um, if you um, use your collection in, for instance, AWX and uh, you have a project update and in the project you have uh, under collections requirements YAML also specified collections and they are newer, they will be installed at um, the project update, which means that you maybe use collections in your automation that are not inside of your execution environment. You can do this if you are very sure that it won't break because it has like small dependencies, but at some point you will forget about it and it will break at some day. So use it with care or even better, don't use it at all. Instead, build new execution environments One second. Um, also, don't use uh, unnecessary mounting of paths to consume binaries. So, that's one thing uh, in, for instance, um, Ansible Runner, there's an option, or also in AWX and the config where you can specify um, paths of your host system uh, which should be mounted in the execution environment when it runs. Um, and um, people get creative and I've seen that people be like, why should I include this binary in the image? I can just mount it in there. Yeah, don't do this. This is an exceptional tool as well to have versioning of binaries in your execution environment. So really try to use the full potential of it. Then don't do any <laughs> unnecessary delegations uh, of tasks to evade the execution environment. It's also something I've seen. Like, oh, this ran um, on the Ansible um, Tower Ansible isolated node prior to AIP 2.0. Let's just delegate it to some host via SSH and now it runs there. Also, there's no reason to do it. You have all the tools at hand um, to evade this problem. In terms of support, I've already talked about it, to use the correct base images uh, correlating to your Ansible Automation Platform version if you're an enterprise customer. Um, and furthermore, um, there's also um, the case of using the correct tool versions. So there's like a very large, um, I think, lifecycle documentation about uh, AAP and you see which version um, uses uh, which tool and which version, which, which um, execution environment base images, uh, so on, so on. Ansible best practices, I kept this very short. Um, for me, but it's, this may be a good a best practice for me, it's maybe a good practice for you. Um, I work a lot in um, like uh, public clouds and um, I have the case that um, latest, greatest is uh, where it's appropriate uh, should be run. So there's a very um, big release management and stringent testing to um, on a high schedule update the collections you actually use so then you don't miss out on um, features you don't miss out on bug fixes, but also there were a lot of talks about um, code quality that you uh, don't, uh, that you are kind of forced to keep your code uh, up to date because if you not do it, um, yeah, it probably won't work in some time. Uh, we, see, we see this like, oh yeah, I wrote an Ansible playbook for this three years ago. Will it work today? Maybe. <laughs> so yeah, avoid technical debt building up. Um, and use the free time you gathered through automating to uh, maintain your automation, basically. Let's uh, speak a bit about container best practices. So, um, yeah, um, one best practice is to frequently uh, build uh, new images because uh, your base images update, there are CVEs fixed, there are big bug fixes in your base images, therefore you should uh, frequently, preferably automated, uh, build new images. Um, 
there's a thing about building storage friendly images. I won't get into much detail and try to oversimplify this because there are more qualified people to speak about this. Um, but basically, if you build a container image, a container image consists of a manifest and a configuration. This configuration is stored in a blob and then there's all the file systems. Layers of the container image uh, are also stored on the blob. So uh, what happens um, if you um, run, if you have, for instance, additional build steps and you say um, run this command which does something and you can like concatenate in, um, that was not a word, excuse me, <laughs> you can uh, with end end you can um, do multiple um, operations in one line which um, you can do, but think about this, that if something, if one of the two commands doesn't change that often, the blob wouldn't change by building it, but if when the other um, changes, the blob will be changed when building. So um, think about these additional build steps and if they, they will change anything, because if you are like frequently building these image, rebuilding these images, you will gather a lot of blobs that will be on all of your systems in your registry and accumulate storage. Um, Lifecycle, um, we really like to talk about deploying and building new things, but rarely about uh, maintaining them. So um, depending on your build environment, you have to uh, regularly do cleanups. Um, so for instance, those blobs and uh, other images you don't use anymore um, are deleted. Um, you have to think about uh, dangling images on hosts, for instance, on AWX or AAP. Um, if you have execution nodes who are running your images and um, you frequently pull the latest check of said image, um, the other images um, will be tagged uh, or will be untagged um, and will just lay there. So you have to think about some cleanup mechanism, which can be, for instance, uh, uh, yeah, Portman image prune. Um, and um, you also have to think about um, unused images in your registry. So for instance, we talked about, or the prior speaker was talking about AAP and that you can use the Automation Hub um, as a container registry. That's possible, but uh, be aware that it's not uh, meant to be a container registry in the first place. So it's probably not the best container registry you can run. Which means if you just keep on building new execution environments, keep on push pushing them uh, to your container registry, they will build up and nobody will clean up for you. So you have to think about this. Maybe use some other container registry in this case. Maybe use something like Harbor or Quay. You can set retention rules in them, uh, which basically say delete this image if it hasn't been pulled for x days um, and or um, yeah, haven't been uh, or doesn't match any specified tag. Talking about tagging, um, I pr um, yeah try to use um, semantic versioning or um, yeah Calver um, to. It's really depends on your workflow. Um, I prefer yeah, to stick to those two. Um, and other point of view, which is. A bit of harder to um, yeah, achieve um, is uh, multi-architecture -archi builds. So uh, especially users of this brand um, are mostly annoyed when um, yeah, their images don't run on the Apple uh, Silicon um, architecture. So think about um, if you want to use the whole um, way of using, uh, as they are intended to use execution environments also on your local machine, uh, you have to think about uh, building multi-architecture builds. Let's talk a bit about security best practices. So basically, um, the first container best practice we already talked about, um, you have to rebuild your images and your execution environments uh, on a schedule to uh, get like all the latest and greatest bug fixes, features, and security f uh, fixes. Um, and there's um, a lot of different ways to do security scans. Um, you can do them at build time and at rest time. Um, you should do both. I see a lot of people building their image in CSCD and then doing a security scan at build time. But if you pull the newest image, 
you kind of expect that there shouldn't be any CVE in there. So um, you should also scan them at rest when they lay in your um, in your registry and um, check on them regularly. If you are using this uh, image, is there a CVE? Uh, it's not just CVEs. Uh, tools like Trivi, for example, also scan for secrets. So that's a great way at build um, to scan if you uh, did a little whoopsie and um, committed any secret uh, in your repo and this is now in your image and potentially in a, a public uh, registry. That's a big, um, yeah, definitely a big a way to uh, generate a secret sprawl and uh, talks with your management you, that you don't want to have. Uh, robustness is also a thing uh, that's um, overlooked a lot of time when we talk about um, yeah, security scans and rebuilding images on a schedule. We don't talk about a lot of fixes that are not affected, um, just CVEs, but also um, robustness and that everything runs smoothly. Uh, yeah, one tool I mentioned is Trivi. I think it's the most well known. Um, and there's also a lot of container registries that inherit um, this feature, for instance, Harbor, which um, I can recommend. It's the CNCF um, project, Quay.io, um, which is kind of the um, yeah, cloud version of Quay from Red Hat. And uh, GitLab does this as well. Um, the screenshot on the right is, for instance, uh, from Quay.io, some um, yeah, report. Um, secure container registry. Uh, this is also often overlooked, especially if you work uh, in public environments. And um, also, I think, if you implement release management, try also to um, separate your build from your production environment when it comes to building images on a schedule. Um, another thing is reducing um, container privilege during runtime. So Podman is a great tool for this because it, um, as default, uses um, rootless. For instance, um, you can do this with Docker, um, but mostly not out of the box. And there's another feature that you can use as to sign images was implemented in, uh, I think, Ansible Builder 1.2, um, that you can use Podman to sign your images. You can't do this with Docker. However, you can use things like buildX and cosign um, if you want um, or need to uh, go the Docker way. Automation. Um, yeah. There is no de facto standard. I could show you a CSD pipeline and you would also know what it is and how it looks and probably how to write it. So um, there's a few resources um, I stumbled upon um, and you just have to use what fits your use case. So um, actually a very funny implementation, this uh, Red Hat Community of Best Practices, or Community of Practices, um, which is a GitHub organization that a lot of um, mostly Red Hat um, employees um, publish the tool sets that they use, for instance, in consulting. Um, and there is a collection called EE Utilities, uh, which basically gives you, I think, two roles. The one role is to migrate execution environments from um, 2.9 Ansible to uh, something newer. And um, the other role in there is uh, used to actually build, uh, it's a wrapper around Ansible Builder, so you can uh, build execution environments with Ansible and write an Ansible playbook um, with, and just define some variables. And uh, yeah, this role will do everything for you. Um, yeah, on the CICD part of things, there is an um, blog about um, automating execution environment images with GitHub Actions um, and a few examples in there. Um, and there's also um, an open shift pipeline and a tech run task. Um, yeah. And when you build it yourself uh, with, uh, for instance, uh, a CSCD pipeline, uh, think about the OCI best practices I told about and uh, try to use Ansible Builder to create the um, build context and then use Builder to uh, build the image. As I thought, uh, I talked way faster than I intended. And um, more, beer. Huh? Yeah, more, beer. more beer, yeah. And 
um, more connecting. So yeah, Q and A. Um, by the way, since you are you having the mic when they ask a the question, please repeat it. So mm -hmm. yeah, any questions? Waiting for beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we promised beer, so therefore, yeah, sure. One question. <laughs> you managed, uh, you, you, you uh, talked about Sorry. the overloading of collections. Yes. Um, so it's possible to have collections in the um, execution environment or to pull them during runtime to the job execution. Yes. Um, wh uh, when would you recommend to choose one or the other? Okay, so the question was I was talking about. Um, collection overloading uh, and when it's wise to choose one over the another. Um, so collection overloading, just to recap this, uh, was that you can, uh, if you don't use the um, collections um, you use in your execution environment, but you define collections on the project scope in AWX and you do a project update, those collections will be installed. And I would not advise you to use collection overloading at all. If you have automated your um, builds, there's no reason to use them. Just build a new image, and if you run this one job in AWX, um, do use a special tag, um, something like this. You can use it. Um, you can also build very minimal execution environments and use, uh, I don't know, only collection overloading if you have any kind of magic yourself to manage all those dependencies. Um, but also you shouldn't use it. So execution environments are the way to go. Collection overloading is, I would say, almost just um, there because of historical reasons, because this was the way to install collections prior to AIP uh, 2.0. Um, and I wouldn't use it since then. Any more questions? We are just talking about including uh, collections slash requirements 65. Yes, exactly. So the question was if I was talking about collections slash requirements that YAML in a project you use in AWX AAP context. Yes. So I published um, all of this in written form in, uh, on GitHub, uh, feel free to uh, yeah, check out the repository, uh, open an issue, open a PR. Uh, if you work with this, um, yeah, hit me up on the Ansible forum. Um, we can also start a discussion thread on there or something. Um, I'd be very pleased to hear from you um, and get your feedback. Thank you.